In this video, we're going to be talking about the 1976 film Marathon Man, directed by John Schlesinger and starred Dustin Hoffman and Laurence Olivier. We're Coffee with Aliens at the Movies, a film education and film review channel. My name is Robert Bellissimo. I'm an actor and acting teacher. My name is Steve Chambers. I'm an actor and writer. And if this is your first time here, or if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking on the subscribe icon in the bottom right of your screen, and then click the bell to get notifications every time we go live or drop a new video. So, Steve, this was your New York movie pick today, yeah. Marathon Man. So why Marathon Man? It does examine, uh, uh, you know, capitalism. And I sound like so highbrow, it examines capitalism, but it does. Because if we look at the government, the American government agents played by Roy Scheider, who plays our lead character, Dustin Hoffman's brother, Roy Scheider and William Devane, what are they doing for the government? They're hiding Nazis and they're paying Nazis to, to help them find other Nazis. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But really what you're doing is some wildly questionable stuff for the ultimate goal, which is to make money. That's what you, that's all you want to do. You want, you want peace. No, you want peace of mind. You want what's yours. And this is like, oh, we'll do anything. We'll trade people. We'll sell out Americans. We'll hurt people. But we'll protect that Nazi because that Nazi can get us what we want over here. I don't care what their crime is. It's so long as I can get what I got to get. I got to get ahead of this race. And uh, I, I really, who you think are heroes in this film, I mean, there are no clear-cut heroes. Uh, certainly not the American government, the uh, agents who are tracking down. And they're not even tracking down the hiding Nazi. They know exactly where he is. Um, mm -hmm. So really, we see this whole thing through the student's eyes. Uh, Dustin Hoffman, who's ignorant, is coming into this like the audience. Like, what's going on? Uh, I'm just trying to get by. Now what I want to talk about, this is really important, is I could never figure out, I never really gave it thought till I was preparing for this video, why the title, Marathon Man? What, what does marathon running and our characters, and we see it as obsessive running, is working out. And it's not just working out, like he's timing himself. He's, he's, he's got a, uh, you know, he's recording his personal best. Like he's treating this serious. He wants to run a marathon. Why is that such a thing? And why is that the title? Like, what, what does that have to do with the film? And the only thing I could think of immediately was, well, okay. Later, he uses those running skills to run, run, run away from the bad guy. Ah, that can't be it. That's not enough. And then it hit me. I've run a half marathon in my life, never a full one. I don't pretend I have. And I run a lot. And what is marathon running but the ultimate test of endurance? Endurance and pain, physical. Emo Trust me, even doing a half marathon, there's psychological pain. Your body will sh like go on automatic pilot after a while and it sucks and it hurts, but you can do it. The hard part is what you're emotionally and psychologically going through. That's what marathon running represents. It's the ultimate endurance test. Why endurance? Well, what does Babe, Dustin Hoffman's character, keep flashing to? The 1960 Summer Olympics. He's watching in his mind, or we, the audience, via flashback, not who people erroneously think is Jesse Owens. That was like in the 30s. This is a runner, a marathon runner, named Abib Bikila, an African, who has got a terrible story if you look this guy up, but he was the first African, black African to win a gold medal at the Olympics for marathon running, and he ran barefoot. He ran barefoot. Why did he run barefoot? He wanted to show the world what Ethiopians, I believe he's Ethiopian, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, I think so, yeah. what we're made of, okay? So talk about endurance, pain, okay. So now we're really enforcing this idea of marathon endurance and pain to the audience. Why? Endurance. What did Babe and Doc's father go through? The endurance and pain of being sought out by uh, the, the, the witch hunters of the House of uh, Un-American Communist Activities. Yeah, I, I said it wrong, but McCarthyism. He's a victim of that. And imagine the pain he had to go through. Hiding that, dealing with that with his family until he could not endure. What does he do? He kills himself, as we discover. What else are we talking about here insofar as endurance goes? I'll right. tell you what we're talking about. Forget the torture scene with Dustin Hoffman. The Jews. That's endurance. And I think the marathon running serves as a very physical, obvious uh, uh, allegory. 
And again, and it is used to show Dustin Hoffman's enduring the torture, enduring uh, uh, running away uh, from the bad guys. And um, let's, uh, to be clear, like this film's, the older I get, the more seriously I take it. Uh, Lawrence Olivier's character is based on a real uh, Nazi named Joseph Mengel, the angel of death. Uh, who I don't think we need to go into this asshole's resume, but did this stuff, like extracted, you know, gold out of teeth, took, stole, yeah. took, just acquired things from these people, from these prisoners, and then hid them, as a lot of Nazis did. You went into hiding like a cockroach when you turn the lights on at midnight in the kitchen. You just hide, and they hoard everything. And now he's, he's living off these diamonds. And the American government knows. And they help transport this man's diamonds to him in South America when he needs them in exchange for information. They have couriers. That's where we get Dustin Hoffman's brother, who Dustin Hoffman's character doesn't even know. He thinks his brother is like a, some high-end uh, business guy. But his brother's a, I guess, a yeah, secret works in oil. courier, works in oil. But in fact, he's tied into these hidden Nazis and the betrayal of the government. I mean, you know, it's it's so twisted and wild. And of course, this happens. And again, I think John Schlesinger, again, teaming up with Hoffman after Midnight Cowboy, does a great job at putting us in Dustin Hoffman's character's place of like, I don't know what's going on. The score is provided by Michael Small, who does this creepy noise and music, this high wire tension sound yeah. that you hear in Clute. You, it's piercing in Clute, in The Stepford Wives, in The Parallax View, all these films about paranoia and conspiracy. And yeah. uh, it's really well utilized here. That's all really well said. Were you Actually, a lot of what you said, I, I didn't pick up on. The, this element of endurance, how that's... The, the marathon. And I don't know if man. I'm right. This is just something that hit me like an hour ago. No, I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah, no, I'm, I think, I, I honestly thought it was as simple as uh, to justify the fact that he could run and I jump. Run I think that is part of it. No, it's interesting because we have like Lawrence Olivier, Dustin Hoffman, and John Schlesinger, yeah. and Roy Shai. Well, Roy Fetter had done, you know, big, had our, like, John. Well, you've done Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the, the, the other three I mentioned, they, they hadn't done anything like this. Like, like you, you think of, uh, they were not people in, who were involved in thrillers. Uh, they were, no. you know, doing dramas basically, or Shakespeare, like Olivier, right. And, and, uh, Schlesinger was a very, uh, basically an art director, you know, but mm -hmm. I actually read he, the main reason he did this was because his last film tanked. And so he thought, okay, I better do something more commercial. Uh, and Dustin loved to work, working with him on Midnight Cowboy. And that was the main reason he wanted to do it uh, yeah. as well. So, and Olivier wanted to do it uh, mainly because he needed the money because he was yeah. dying of cancer at that yeah. time. He actually miraculously um, recovered, but he, yeah. he, it, didn't, he wasn't, it didn't look like he was going to at that time. And he was on major painkillers just right. to be able to work. Uh, but he was doing it for money for his children and his family. Yeah. So it's interesting, all these motive, the reason that they were all doing it was was not uh, purely creative or out of passion. Well, it came none of from, it. none of it. I, you know, it's very, it's, it's very Hitchcockian, you know, it's, a, it's sure. a very, it's a guy who falls into a situation that he knows nothing about that because he's the brother of Roy Scheider, who's very involved and after Roy Scheider gets killed they think he knows everything mm. uh, and he doesn't know anything <laughs> mm. so it was very Hitchcock in that sense and even some of the the uh the the shots for example I, I talked last week in our Hitchcock talk about the use of POV and yeah. there's a I love what he did where Roy Scheider comes back after getting stabbed Stab oh yeah I know exactly yes and and it's scary too like the door it's the camera and the door opens and it turns and you see Hoffman and it's a POV of Scheider. And then they yeah. cut to Hoffman looking and screaming and then yeah. saying doc. And then they cut back to Scheider and there he is. And it's all it's pale because you don't oh. expect it. It just, you, you don't expect that after getting stabbed, he could make it there. Right. But then he's no. totally white 
and it was very, very well directed, and it's it's very yeah. Hitchcocky and abusive. That's appeal. a good point. I hadn't thought about and that. Just on, on, yeah, yeah, and he uses it in in in, in other scenes in the movie as well. But uh, the performances, of course, I mean, you know, Dustin, uh, that scene that right after that, where the police are there, and then the, the guy who worked with Roy Scheider's character was there, and you see how emotional he is about witnessing his brother's death. And, and you know, then he's, he starts to get angry at all the questions. And then, you know, he starts saying, come on, come on, they were on me for like two hours with questions. And I remember uh, the first time I watched it, uh, when he said that, I, I jumped because it, it, it like it come pops right out of the screen. Like it's so real. I agree. Uh, and that's the thing. That's yeah. my favorite part of that film acting wise isn't the torture. Yeah. It's what Me you too. just said. It's exactly that. Yeah. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's, you know, there's so many great performances on film, but it's one thing to be real and you can of course feel the actor but how many times can you say an actor is so responsive, responsive that you jump, that their emotion makes you jump? I, you know, I can only name a few actors who I've experienced that with on film. It's, it's easier to see that in a play because the actor's right there. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of those moments that I'm like, holy shit, like talk about uh, an incredible actor. The first hour of the film, you don't exactly know everything that's going on uh, because you, they just chip away at information. But you know, you see the his his brother in Paris, you see he then gets attacked in his hotel room. You know that he's involved in something. And the guy who attacks him, he's stalking him beforehand. Yeah. Uh, and then even after he kills that guy in the hotel room, and then he says to his partner, Oh, they're killing all the couriers. But you're like, you're you're still just getting bits and pieces. And it's not until the second hour until Dustin Hoffman gets kidnapped. And then his partner comes and saves him, or you think he's saving him. And then he tells him everything in the car about the diamonds, about the Nazis, about what his brother really was involved in. And, uh, and, and that's when you get the full picture. But in the first hour, you're a little like Dustin Hoffman's character. You're just getting like, you have to be patient with it because you don't truly know everything that's going on. And I, I thought that was, that was clever because I think in most conventional narratives, I think even in a Hitchcock film, you would have known a lot of that early on. I think they would have been concerned that the audiences would be too lost. And I know uh, this was on the Criterion channel for a yeah. while. It's, it's not, not now. Anymore. No, I think you can only rent it or buy it on, I see Amazon Prime and YouTube. Okay. Um, okay. And of course, do for sure. or yeah, you can get the old, the old widescreen Paramount uh, edition here, <laughs> which uh, doesn't have a ton. Oh, there's a making of Marathon Man uh, featurette, rehearsal footage. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't think I've watched any of that, but yeah. That would be worth seeing. Totally. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Again, if this is your first time here, or if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking on the subscribe icon in the top right, uh, floating above my head. Click on that and then click the bell to get notifications every time we go live or drop a video. Thank you so much and we will see you next time.